Welcome to Big Data Masterclass with IBM. Event at 590 Madison Avenue, 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. November 5, 2019. Details of the class. The agenda covers topic ranging from Spark AI, Big Data, Cloudera, IBM, Hortonworks, ESS, Red Hat, and what all these companies bring to the table. By the end of this course, you will have defined big data and you will be familiar with the characteristics of big data. You will know what the V's of the big data world represents. Also, you will have an appreciation for why so many people are interested in big data. Here's what some folks say about this course. I came today to learn more about big data and Hadoop, and it's been extremely informative, so thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello, I just want to say this was very informative, and uh, I'd like to thank you too. Though. Awesome presentation. A very clear foundational explanation about uh, the technology and the trends, and thank you very much for your explanation. I think this class is very good, and uh, I learned a lot of the um, updated knowledge about big data and uh, um, I highly recommend you come and to learn. Thank you. Let's start with the course. To log in, go to https courses.cognitiveclass.ai. Once you log in, you'll see there are a number of courses available in this platform. Go to search bar and type Big Data Foundation Level 1. Upon typing Big Data Foundation Level 1, you would be able to see the course that we are going to take today. The Big Data Foundation Level 1. Go to Learn More and then go to Class. This cognitive class defines what is Big Data and what does Apache Hadoop do in big data space. There are a total five modules. Upon completion of these five modules, we would be take, able to take a final exam and that would result in completing a certificate and a badge issued by Acclaim and IBM. So I'll quickly go over introduction, current affairs, big data overview, what are the four V's of the world and how storage solutions are helping our big data clients and then uh, we'll, we'll go to cognitivecourse.ai and we'll go through some big data examples like Netflix, Amazon, and Google, how they're using their recommendation engines uh, in order to uh, get people's interest and choices and then uh, put out the streaming uh, according to the interest of people and then we'll do the small exercise of earning the badge. Our technical team leader who's present here with us is John Ernst and Joy Lee, and this is this is me as a speaker and co-organizer uh, over here with us is Max Holland. If you guys have some use cases, you could um, extend a LinkedIn invite to all the people present here, uh, some of IBMers. There's additional thanks to Elizabeth uh, Crevin, Matt Tolman, Diane Britton, Nicole Marlin, and Bob Green, who are not here, but I think they're they're streaming live with us, and. The big data use cases that we're going to uh, talk about is uh, autonomous driving, uh, collision avoidance, uh, route optimization. These are these are some some car car companies who came up with this idea of self-driving car. So that's where they're utilizing a lot of video feed and, and data coming from IOTs because sensor data. When you drive a car, you collect sensor data, and that's how you know, you're able to decide on making a decision if it has to go right or left or avoid some pits and things like that. So that's one application of big data. Another is uh, if you want to do seismic analysis, uh, it's very important for uh, power grid companies. And then market prediction, fraud, fraud analysis, it's good for all the financial sector people. N nonetheless, it's, it's present in every industry, but it's um, you know, a major use case for this, these financial industries. And then uh, location-based advertising, uh, stock forecasting, buyer behavior, that's another application. In manufacturing quality control where you could you know, see people, uh, sometimes there is a protocol they're not following, let's say they're not wearing a, a hard hat 
in a facility. So then a video feed analyzing that and sending an alert, that could be a, a big data use case. Whereas where we are taking the video feed and analyzing that video feed using, there's one uh, very good software, it's called Power AI Vision, through which you know there are multiple use cases that we have uh, in store for Power AI Vision. It, it's, it's good in case uh, when you want to do uh, when you want to analyze a particular video and you want to make sense out of it and you don't want people or your resources to be employed only just to monitor that feed. For an example, we recently created uh, an app, an iPhone app, where people uh, could take a picture of any broken pole in their locality and can upload it to that app. So the power grid company would get an automatic alert onto their system that, and they, they would the vendors would get a notification onto their phone saying that there is a broken pole at this particular GPS location pointing on the app in the map so they could like dispatch uh, personnel uh, very quickly and, and maintenance could be done easily. So those are different uh, applications of uh, AI and big data. There is a threat detection assessments and experimental sensor capture. And the next slide would cover important links so, so this is big data analytic. Um, it's we have a Spark AI grid play where, where uh, you know generally what happens? What is big data? So, you have let's say you have pictures, photos, and and you have audio streams stored in your MacBook or your personal laptop, and you're and you're basically using an engine, let's say a SQL engine, that is not capable of uh, retrieving all the. Uh, material that you have present in your MacBook or your uh, personal laptop. But then, uh, this is on a short scale, when you're streaming through large or chunks chunks of data and you want to pinpoint a particular uh, file or like a, a, a picture, that's where uh, you have to use a no, no SQL. There's something called no SQL where a SQL query would not work. What I mean by SQL query would not work is like, there's a table, whenever you, all of you must have been to a school, when you go to school, you have, you're assigned a roll number and then roll number and name, last name, first name, date of birth. So that's how the, the school maintains your record. So in case th you ask for a transcript, so they would go on to system, trigger SQL query says that where F name equals to Lisa, pull out the records for year 2019. And it's like select star from EMP, something like that. So that's a structured query. You're you're querying a structure table where you have all the header is fixed and then you have all the data lie, lie down structured. But then there are times when you are looking for an anonymous image and you have an image and you want to compare it with 50,000 images in order to identify that image belongs to which person. So that's where the C SQL would not work. So that's where a big data comes in place. And and Spark is one of the good engines which, which would be used in order to trigger that uh, data, uh, trigger query on that data. And big data analytic is, is basically a type of visualization, different type of visualizations that you can perform on big, big data. There's an IDC report out that says IBM is number one in the field, in, and, and there's a link over here posted which you guys can go through. We also have an image which shows the big data architecture posted on IDC. And then there's this big data university, the cognitive class.ai, uh, where we will do our course today. Uh, the, also, we would see we see that 80% unstructured data. There is an increase of 80% unstructured data over time, uh, and the data explosion is exponential. What are the steps to uh, log in? So just sign up to this class, and there would be a $1,200 cloud credit that you would receive once you log into the class, and then you have to search for Big Data Foundation 101 course. If you guys want to follow along, it's okay. Otherwise. Uh, I would have the review material onto the uh, meetup, so you could access it from there as well. And then you'll have to enroll in this course and then say visit the course and start and take the exam and review the uh, material. We, we will do that right now. Now let's look at what is big data and what do experts say about it?
Lisa Arthur, a Forbes contributor, defines big data as a collection of data from traditional and digital sources inside and outside a company that represent a source of ongoing discovery and analysis. There is no one definition of big data, but there are certain elements that are common across the different definitions, such as velocity, volume, variety, and veracity. So, so this was one of the modules here, and there are several. You could go in, uh, in depth in this. We'd go to great, and there's a lab where you could read blogs, big data in business. We would go to graded review questions now. So name one of the drivers of volume in the big data era. So scalable infrastructure, an increase in cost to store data, competitive advantage, fintech, research and development. So everything, everything over here looks pretty much, you know, the driving factor. An increase in cost to store data, yes, there is an increase in competitive advantage, yes. Fintech, yes, it's booming, research and development. But I think infrastructure plays the major role in driving the volume of data. So I would choose that. So it checks, and you get two options. So if, if there is something wrong, you would get, you would, uh, it would, again, give you an option to choose one of those, and then you can choose something different in order to, and then when you do a final check or a save, that's when, so basically you have two submissions. So we have used our one, and, and we were right here. Now value from big data can be, uh, so the best value is profits. Yes, definitely, you know, there is an increased technical ability, but a business, you know, is looking out for profit. So I think that's, that's the driving factor here. So, and the questions remain same. So once you go home, you would definitely be able to reciprocate it. Yeah. So, and there is a video where they say 2.5 quintillion bytes. So one, one byte, there's a scale of 1,024 bytes, and then 1,024 bytes forms one, uh, there's one megabyte, and then how it's like a scale of gigabytes, and then there's a 10 million uh, uh, Blu-ray DVDs, they're equal to 2.5 quintillion bytes. So the answer over here is 10 million. So, so that's not, again, correct. So once you do that, so there were three questions in this let's review, graded review question. So you could go to progress while you're doing this. Anything you need is 70%. So once you have achieved 70% uh, overall, so, so right now we have 100% in RQ01. All you need is a total of 70% over here. So let's say if you do good in your review questions five and you don't perform very well in here, still you're gonna get like 70% because 70% is the passing grade. So we could go back to course info and do our chapter number two. So as you see, the the trend shows that uh, big data is uh, booming. Now we go to module two, beyond the hype. So that's the learning objectives here uh, are different. It's uh, it's basically they're talking about uh, what are the different uh, companies that adopted big data and how they benefited from it. So we could listen to this thing. There's Hello. some. And welcome to Big Data University. In this lesson, we will look at some examples of big data and how it is being generated. We will discuss sources of big data and the different types of big data. So why is everyone talking about big data? More data has been created in the past two years than in the entire previous history of humankind. By 2020, about 1.7 megabytes of new information will be created every second for every human being in the world. 
By 2020, the data we create and copy will reach around 35 zettabytes, up from only 7.9 zettabytes today. The chart on the right shows the growth in global data in zettabytes. Note the jump from 2015 to 2020 of 343%. How big is a zettabyte? One bit is binary. It's either a one or a zero. Eight bits make up one byte, and 1,024 bytes make up one kilobyte. 1,024 kilobytes make up one megabyte. Large videos and DVDs will be in gigabytes, where 1,024 megabytes make up one gigabyte of storage space. These days, we have USBs or memory sticks that can store a few dozen gigabytes of information where computers and hard drives now store terabytes of information. One terabyte is 1,024 gigabytes. 1,024 terabytes make up one petabyte, and 1,024 petabytes make up an exabyte. Think of a big urban city or a busy international airport like Heathrow, JFK, O'Hare, Dubai, or O.R. Tambo in Johannesburg, and now we're talking petabytes and exabytes. All those airplanes are capturing and transmitting data. All the people in those airports have mobile devices. Also consider the security cameras and all the staff in and around the airport. A digital universe study conducted by IDC claimed digital information reached 0.8 zettabytes last year and predicted this number would grow to 35 zettabytes by 2020. It is predicted that by 2020, one-tenth of the world's data will be produced by machines and most of the world's data will be produced in emerging markets. It is also predicted that the amount of data produced will increasingly outpace available storage. Advances in cloud computing have contributed to the increasing potential of big data. According to McKinsey in 2013, the emergence of cloud computing has highly contributed to the launch of the big data era. Cloud computing allows users to access highly scalable computing and storage resources through the Internet. By using cloud computing, companies can use server capacity as needed and expand it rapidly to the large scale required to process big data sets and run complicated mathematical models. Cloud computing lowers the price to analyze big data as the resources are shared across many users who pay only for the capacity they actually utilize. A survey by IBM and Said Business School identified three major sources of big data people-generated data, machine-generated data, and business-generated data, which is the data that organizations generate within their own operations. The chart on the right shows different responses where responders were allowed to select multiple answers. Big data will require analysts to have big data skills. Big data skills include discovering and analyzing trends that occur in big data. Big data comes in three forms structured, unstructured, and semi-structured. Structured data is data that is organized, labeled, and has a strict model that it follows. Unstructured data is said to make up about 80% of data in the world, where the data is usually in a text form and does not have a predefined model or is organized in any way. And semi-structured <laughs> data is a combination of the two. It is similar to structured data where it may have an organized structure but lacks a strictly defined model. Some sources of structured big data are relational databases and spreadsheets. With this type of structure, we know how data is related to other data, what the data means, and the data is easy to query using a programming language like SQL. Some sources of semi-structured big data are XML and JSON files. These sources use tags or other markers to enforce hierarchies of records and fields within data. A large multi-radio telescope project called Square Kilometer Array, or SKA, produces about 1,000 petabytes, in 2011 at least, of raw data a day. It is projected that it will produce about 20,000 petabytes, or 20 billion gigabytes of data each day in 2020. Currently, there is an explosion of data coming from internet activity, and in particular, video production and consumption as well as social media activities. These numbers will just keep growing as internet speeds increase, and as more and more people all over the world have access to the internet. Structured data refers to any data that resides in a fixed field within a record or file. 
It has the advantage of being easily entered, stored, queried, and analyzed. In today's business setting, most big data generated by organizations is structured and stored in data warehouses. Highly structured, business-generated data is considered a valuable source of information and thus equally important as machine and people-generated data. Thank you for taking this lesson. Happy learning. So when they say nowadays companies are using structured business-generated data, that's basically when you go to Walmart, swipe your card, so there is an identifier uh, MD hash key that is assigned to your credit card and your information and that is structurally structurally stored in the data that they're they're not storing your pictures and they're not storing your audio files so that's structured data so that's that's what they mean here by companies storing that data there is there is a professor uh, in one of the universities it says in if you go to labs in those labs, you'll see the name of the professor and the university. So, you, so basically, it's it's a blog reading exercise. So you could read a blog, and so Professor Norman White is a faculty director at Stern Center for Research Computing at NYC, at NY University, NYU. And then this is this is his blog spot where he comments. So the exercise is basically to read it and post comments. So it's it's not graded, but it's just a extra to do thing. Now we could go to our graded review questions. So this is Facebook joins Google in H HPC. HPC is high performance computing. <coughs> so now now our question is how many petabytes makes an exabyte? I, they were there was a lot of one thousand twenty four so I'll go with that. <laughs> Yeah, that's correct. And then what is an example of a source of semi-structure? So it was XML and JSON. So I see JSON here. So that's correct. And then when is it estimated that the data we create and copy will reach around 35 zettabyte? So I'd say 2020. So that's correct as well. So now we move on to our third chapter. Big data and data science. I like the module four a lot because that relates very much to to our daily life. Even this is this is a nice one. This is basically when a data scientist Hello, use and welcome to big data University. big data to draw in analytics. this lesson we will look at how big data relates to data science we will look at the skills data scientists should have and we will look at what's involved in the data science process when we look at big data we can start with a few broad topics integration analysis visualization optimization security and governance Let's start Screen off with a quick capture. definition of integration. To integrate means to bring together or incorporate parts into a whole. In big data, it would be ideal to have one platform to manage all of the data rather than individual silos, each creating separate silos of insight. Big data has to be bigger than just one technology or one enterprise solution which was built for one purpose. For example, a bank should be thinking about how to integrate its retail banking it's commercial banking and investment banking. One way to be bigger than one technology is to use Hadoop when dealing with big data. A Hadoop distributed file system, or HDFS, stores data from many different locations, creating a centralized place to store and process the data. Many large companies make use of Hadoop in their technologies. Analysis. Let's look at a Walmart example. Walmart utilizes a search engine called Polaris, which helps shoppers search for products they wish to buy. It takes into account how a user is behaving on the website in order to surface the best results for them. Polaris will bring up items that are based on a user's interests, and because many consumers visit Walmart's website, large amounts of data are collected, making the analysis on that big data very important. Visualization. 
Some people work well with tables of data. However, the vast majority of people need big data to be presented to them in a graphical way so they can understand it. Data visualization is helpful to people who need to analyze the data, like analysts or data scientists, and it is especially useful to non-technical people who need to make decisions from data but don't work with it on a daily basis. An example of visualizing big data is in displaying temperature on a map by region. By using the massive amounts of data collected by sensors and satellites in space, viewers can get a quick and easy summary of where it's going to be hot or cold. Security and Governance Data privacy is a critical part of the big data era. Business and individuals must give great thought to how data is collected, retained, used, and disclosed. A privacy breach occurs when there is unauthorized access to, or collection, use, or disclosure of personal information, and often this leads to litigation. Companies must establish strict controls and privacy policies in compliance with the legal framework of the geographic region they are in. Big data governance requires three things. Automated integration, that is, easy access to the data wherever it resides. Visual content, that is, easy categorization, indexing, and discovery within big data to optimize its usage. Agile governance is the definition and execution of governance appropriate to the value of the data and its intended use. Looking at these three things provides businesses with a quick way to profile the level of importance of the data and therefore the amount of security required to protect it. Some of the applications used in big data are Hadoop, Uzi, Flume, Hive, HBase, Apache Pig, Apache Spark, MapReduce and Yarn, Scoop, Zookeeper, and Text Analytics. So, just just going we through all these uh, Uzi's orchestration tool. So, what what I'm what they mean by orchestration is, so let's say you want to um, run certain jobs in a particular order, you would go to Uzi and say job one, job two, and you will uh, basically assign uh, what job would be scheduled at what time. It's an orchestration tool, and then Hive is something similar to SQL, where you write SQL queries, but it's much faster. And then uh, Scoop is SQL plus Hadoop, so you trigger, uh, on Hadoop also you can trigger SQL queries. So you can have uh, access to structured data and non-structured data at the same time. So these are different technologies, those are used in uh, uh, the big data. To run these applications and analyze big data. Big Data University offers free courses on Hadoop, machine learning, analytics, Spark, and much more. Look up Big Data Dudes to learn more about Spark and Big Data. There are many MOOCs or massive open online courses and some formal programs in Big Data too. Data science is the process of cleaning, mining, and analyzing data to derive insights of value from it. In data science, the size of the data is less important one can use data of all sizes, small, medium, and big data that is related to a business or scientific case. Insights are extracted through a combination of exploratory data analysis and modeling. Data science is the process of distilling insights from data to inform decisions. A data scientist is a person who is qualified to derive insights from data by using skills and experience from computer science, business or science, and statistics. Here are more skills that a data scientist must have. So whenever we are discussing any uh, big data One challenge with a client, the following process these are the questions we should be data. asking. Determine problem. What is the business problem? What is the project objective? What would you do if you had all the data? Collect data. Which data is relevant? Are there any privacy issues? Explore the data. Plot the data. Are there any patterns? Analyze the data. Build a model. Fit the model. Validate the model. Storytelling. Visualization plus communication. Can we tell a story? Take action and make decisions. Thank you for taking this lesson. You have seen some applications of big data and you have learned the data science process. Happy learning. So now we would go to the graded review questions for this, this one.
what they meant by building models is let's say you have a, a business problem let's say you're hosting an event and you need to identify uh, you know what kind of uh, drinks you want to uh, have in the event so you, you build a model and you take consider you consider uh, the past meetups or past events and then you consider what could be the attendance so th those are very relevant variables and this is just a, a, a use case I'm taking, but there could be multiple use cases. Those pertain to like industry specific. And then based on that, you would decide so there's less wastage of food and, and people enjoy it too. So th that's when you build a model or come up with a model which is uh, suitable. And then what is the process of cleaning and analyzing data to derive insights and value from it? So. So this is machine learning, exploratory research, data science, predictive modeling, and decision tree. So I think it's data science. That's that's the process of cleaning data. Because machine learning in itself is, is an algorithm-driven approach, and exploratory data research is when you explore data in depth. So where it is, what is the source of data? Is it valid? Or master data management, the, the records are not duplicate and things. Whereas in this, you do cleaning, analyzing, and then uh, deriving insights and making predictions. So, and then over here, what is the search engine used by Walmart? So Walmart uses Polaris. It's a customer of IBM. So we know that. And an example of visualizing big data is, so, so Hadoop is, is basically the framework Integration is when you integrate two frameworks. Agile governance is a part of big data, but it's not an example. Temperature on a map. Now, when you when you think of a map, so I think that's the, that's the best example of uh, visualizing big data on a map, where you can say uh, over here, this is this is a colder region. This is this uh, this region is n has a tropical climate, or etc. And closing your eyes and imagining it. That's not big data. <laughs> so that's correct. Now we go back to my favorite module, that's module four, and we would go to big data use cases. So the most discussed use case is Netflix. That was the initial use case in big data. So they discussed that over here as well. Hello, and welcome to Big Data University. In this lesson, we will look at some use cases for big data, and we will see how big data is adding value in business. We'll be looking at big data exploration to find, visualize, and understand big data to improve business knowledge. We will learn the concept of the enhanced 360-degree view. This is a way of looking at the customer to achieve a true unified view, incorporating internal and external data sources. We will explore the concept of security and intelligence extension to lower risk, detect fraud, and monitor cybersecurity in real time. We will look at operations analysis to analyze a variety of machine data to improve business results. Big data exploration addresses the challenge faced by every large organization. Business information is spread across multiple systems and silos. Big data exploration enables you to explore and mine big data to find, visualize, and understand all your data to improve decision making. By creating a unified view of information across all data sources, both inside and outside of your organization, you gain enhanced value and new insights. Let's look at a transportation example. By using data from different systems, such as cameras at different points in a city, weather information, and GPS data from Uber, taxis, trucks, and cars, we can predict traffic at a faster and more accurate pace to deploy real-time, smarter traffic systems that improve traffic flow. There are many positive benefits from this, including reduced fuel emissions, public transportation planning, and longer-lasting transportation infrastructure. With the advent of self-driving cars, machine learning algorithms can be trained using historical and real-time data from human-driven cars on the road. 
This would teach the driverless car how real drivers behaved in different traffic situations in varying weather conditions and circumstances. In the digital era, the touch points between an organization and its customers have increased many times over. Organizations now require specialized solutions to effectively manage these connections. An enhanced 360-degree view of the customer is a holistic approach that takes into account all available and meaningful information about the customer to drive better engagement, revenue, and long-term loyalty. This is the basis for modern customer relationship management, or CRM, systems. Let's look at an example in detail. By taking an enhanced 360-degree view of the customer and taking available and meaningful information such as spending habits, shopping behavior, and preferences, grocery stores are able to plan, prepare, and provide better services to customers. The growing number of high-tech crimes, cyber-based terrorism, espionage, computer intrusions, and major cyber fraud cases poses a real threat to every individual and organization. To meet these security challenges, businesses are using big data technologies to change and enhance their cybersecurity and intelligence activities. How? By processing and analyzing new data types such as social media, emails, and analyzing hours and hours of video footage. Analyzing data in motion and at rest can help find new associations or uncover patterns and facts to significantly improve intelligence, security, and law enforcement. Operations analysis focuses on analyzing machine data, which can include anything from signals, sensors, and logs to data from GPS devices. This type of data is growing at an exponential rate and it comes in large volume and a variety of formats. Using big data for operations analysis, organizations can gain real-time visibility into operations, customer experience, transactions, and behavior. Big data empowers businesses to predict when a machine will stop working, when machine components need to be replaced, and even when employees will resign. Let's look at an example. Airplane engines generate large amounts of data every second, by analyzing this massive amount of data from the turbine and even other sensors on the plane, such as GPS, temperature, and speed, organizations are able to gain real-time visibility into the operations of the plane. This data is used to run the aircraft safely and efficiently, and in the unlikely event of a crash, this data can also tell air crash investigators exactly what caused the accident. <coughs> Many present-day aviation regulations and protocols have come from the data collected in past incidents. Personalized recommendations. Walmart consistently sends tailored product offers based on customer behavior online and in stores. Walmart has also enjoyed success in email marketing campaigns by optimizing the time that offers are sent. Walmart tracks each pain's open rate and realigns delivery times based on individual user patterns. Thank you for taking this lesson. You have seen some use cases for big data and how big data is adding value to business. Happy learning. Now we would move to graded review questions. Number one is what is the term used to describe a holistic approach that takes into account all available and meaningful information about a customer to derive to drive better engagement, revenue, and long-term loyalty? Answer would be one enhanced 360 degree view. So that's correct. And then what can help organizations to find new associations or uncover patterns and facts to significantly improve? intelligence security and law enforcement so that would be analyzing data in motion and at rest that's correct and in operation analysis we focus on what type of data so location data machine data binary data social media data or structure data it's machine data and now it's the last module we could uh, it's processing big data. There's a way we could go uh, look at the video over here and do a lab, but we would just quickly review the questions. What is a method of storing data to support the analysis of originally 
disparate sources of data. So the answer would be data lakes. And then data warehouses provide online analytic processing. So that's probably is false. Oh, that's true. And then what does OLAP stands for? It's online analytic processing. So say check. And now we go to final exam. I'm ready to take this timed exam. It's for one hour. So in order to pass it, we need to complete it within an hour. Total 10 questions. Number one is in module one, what is the common use of big data that is used by companies like Netflix, Spotify, Facebook, and Amazon? Because when you go to Netflix, you watch a movie, they recommend you another movie based on that particular movie you watch. So it's it's a recommendation engine they're using. In module two is one by one byte binary. I think so. When when it means like one byte pertains to zero or one. So I, oh that's false. I think so, yeah, eight bits is one right. The smallest is bits, yes. Yes, smallest is bits. So so we still get one more, no, I think yes. So we get one more chance. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I mean, it's amazing how they have two choices and they have two submissions. <laughs> So in module two, what was highly contributed to the launch of big data era? Uh, I think it is cloud computing. Yeah. A data scientist is a person who's qualified to derive insights from data by using skills and experience from computer science, business, or science. I think, yeah. Are you sure? We have two submissions. HDFS stands for Hadoop Distributed File System that I know. Data privacy is a critical part of the big data era. Businesses and individuals must give great thought to how data is collected, retained, used, and disclosed. Is the Hadoop framework a rack is a collection of so whenever it comes to Hadoop, what happens is, let's say I have three computers. One computer, I'd make node one. This one, I'd make node two. And that one, I would make node three. And this would be serving as a master node if I'm sending the scripts from here. It's actually like computers, different computers. So that's how big data is. You know, If you want to work on it, like actually, you run scripts on three different computers and use different computers as node one, node two, node three. And it's the processing unit, so those nodes go into a rack. So over here, nodes is rack. So it's important to know when you're de designing your own big data infrastructure. What is a method of storing data to support the analysis of originally disparate sources of data? Yeah, I think it's data leak. Whenever data lake is an option, it's generally the answer. <laughs> the Hadoop framework is mostly written in the Java programming language, yes. Because you, mm, when they say Hadoop framework, it's mostly MapReduce programs that you write in Java. And most, uh, most bridges it as JDBC, ODBC connectivity, most plugins. So that's true. And this is the last question. So I would not even read the question and I'll put the answer. What is the term referring to a database that must be processed by means other than the SQL query language? So that's a no SQL. So there are two type of databases. It's like SQL query language databases or no SQL, like Cassandra, MongoDB. We, IBM has a partnership with MongoDB. So that's, and then I could, in five minutes I could submit my exam.
and a badge. Oh, really? Yes. Bonus? I like 42 badges. <laughs> okay. So this would be 43rd. Okay. Any congratulations? No. So you could go to progress page. And 97% completion certificate. Yes. Generally, courses here are free. Plus, you also get, if you want to build cloud apps and things, you also get $1,200 in credit once you sign up. So it's like, you know, how you get it. You Usually, in, initially, you we were getting it in AWS, but then they stopped doing it. We can claim badge and and complete certificate. So these were foundations, like things, uh, no, required for understanding or discussing big data. We can go big data foundations level too. I recently happened to post uh, a video uh, on AI, m Python AI machine learning badge as well. So there also I did a review and I was able to get like 3.6K views on it. Oh, this is live right now, so you guys are visible here. It's working. Yeah. So, like, I think I have 3.6K views on it so far. About how to earn a machine. So, if, if you guys want to do that, that is also an option. But, yeah. I think there's a little lag on here. Yeah. Yes. Five yeah, five second lag. <laughs> it's because I'm streaming through a free software. I did not pay for it. Yeah. But thank you so much, you guys. If you have any questions, please. Yeah. Thank Thank you. Also, please fill out uh, the form. So, and if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to. It's it's important for us. <coughs> so, please do fill it out and hand it over to me.